Hi, this is Dr. Saad Khan and uh, we are here with the second video of the series, The Human Digestive System. So we'll start from where we left off. This is the oral cavity and here we can also see the pharynx and the upper part of the esophagus, very upper part of the esophagus, the food tube. Okay, when we swallow the food, uh, the food, the tongue pushes the food and it goes from the pharynx into the esophagus. And we uh, uh, studied last time that from the esophagus, esophagus is just a tube that pushes the food from the, uh, the pharynx or the oral cavity into the stomach. There is just one thing in the esophagus. In the esophagus, there are strong muscular contractions, or we can say there are muscular contractions, and these are called peristalsis. Under normal circumstances, when a person is standing or sitting, it is not as important because gravity does all the work. It is much a stronger force to push the food, I um, mean, to pull the food down towards the stomach. What if even if we stand upside down? There are muscular contractions in esophagus that can push the food from the uh, from the oral cavity or the pharynx all the way down to the stomach. So, if we uh, if we are standing on our head, we can uh, still swallow the food. So now moving our journey towards the stomach, who we'll, uh, head is the stomach, and the esophagus enters the stomach. The stomach to study stomach is very easy. There are several parts of the stomach you can see in this diagram. The part where the esophagus enters the stomach, that part is called the cardiac region or the cardia, and the main part of the stomach, the main bulk of it, is called the body of the stomach. Uh, here is a small part that is called the fundus of the stomach you can see it in this figure it is shown in blue color that where the esophagus enters the stomach if you draw a straight line from there the top dome of the stomach that is called the fundus so the fundus of the stomach the cardiac region the main body of the stomach and down here is the antrum of the stomach it is a part like the funnel the open uh, open part of this is called the antrum the pyloric antrum and uh, uh, from the pyloric antrum this is small part this part is called pyloric canal and this opening is actually called the pylorus generally we call all of this part the pyloric region of the stomach this is the cardiac region of the stomach this is the pyloric region of the stomach this is the body of the stomach and this upper part is the fundus of the stomach okay food enters in the stomach through this uh, esophagus and here there uh, there is the cardiac sphincter Stom sphincter is a rubber band like thing it is a valve like thing and it does not allow food while the stomach is turning up the food the stomach is mixing the food with the gastric juice this sphincter makes sure that none of this food goes back into the esophagus so it, it does not damage this uh, the acidic contents of the stomach they do not damage the esophagus okay and here in this diagram we see a stomach is uh, cut open so we can see there are several layers of muscles in a stomach in whole of the digestive system the circular layer is present and the longitudinal muscle layer is present this is nothing special here but here in a stomach what is different what is special is that the unique part of it it has oblique muscle layer this oblique muscle layer is not present in any other part of the digestive system except for the stomach so these three layers of the stomach they mix up the food real good they churn it up with the digestive juice uh, with the gastric juice which is produced in the stomach okay outside it is covered by serosa this is the serosa which covers all of these uh, layers and this is the outermost layer the innermost layer is the mucosa the mucosa of the stomach is folded up you can see it is folded up and it has these foldings called rugi they are called gastric rugi and it is because of these foldings that the stomach when it is empty its volume is about 50 milliliters but stomach but after typical meal its volume rises to about one to one and a half liters but this is stomach is very extendable it if we take a heavy meal it can extend up to four liters and it can it can extend down all the way down to the pelvis it can extend down to here very here uh, off screen so uh, the, these uh, mucosa of the stomach has a small gastric glands these are the gastric glands and these gastric glands produce uh, two important things interesting things that is stomach itself produces gastric juice which has HCL number one and number two it produces pepsinogen pepsinogen is actually an inactive form of an enzyme pepsin that can digest protein that actually digests protein so how is it that a stomach has this HCL and a stomach has this 
protein digesting enzyme and his stomach is itself not being eaten up okay think of think about it yourself i'll give you some clues and we'll discuss it in the next video um it is mainly because of the this uh, his stomach mucosa is covered with mucus so the the, the actual uh, acid is not directly in contact with this mucosa and secondly these this uh, the mucosa uh the mucosal uh, epithelial cells they get sloughed off only every like three or four days um and uh, new new cells are from from this bottom part of these glands and these glands when they produce the gastric juice and uh, it is poured out into the stomach through these small pits these are called the pits of gastric glands Okay, then there is the muscular layer of the stomach and outside is the serosa and this is not as important in learning the physiology of the stomach. Okay, we move our attention to the next part. The stomach mixes up this um, uh, gastric juice with the incoming food on the esophagus and slowly and gradually it empties this food into the duodenum. It uh, empties about 4 ml of food each time there is a peristaltic wave which starts from here and here and it squeezes a small amount of food and if, if uh, some food is big enough which cannot pass through it, it moves back and it stomach churns it up a bit more. So when the stomach mixes up the food and the food is all paste like that food is called chyme, C-H-Y-M-E and that chyme enters from the stomach into the duodenum. Okay, one other interesting fact about uh, the vomiting. We think, and uh, most people think, that vomiting is because the stomach contracts. The stomach contracts, so the gastric contents are expelled out from to the mouth, and this is vomiting. Actually, a stomach does not contract in vomiting. It is the abdominal muscles, the ab muscles, these contract, this is, uh, belly muscles, and the diaphragm. Diaphragm is a muscle which is present here here above the stomach and above the liver okay it presses on the stomach from above and the abdominal muscles which are present outside here they press on the stomach from the anterior part and uh, when these contractions become become strong then there is antiperistalsis move the movement uh, the muscular contraction the stomach in opposite direction and the food is expelled from the mouth it is not because stomach is a squeeze itself and it forces the contents out in the form of um, vomiting Okay, that was about the stomach and uh, one more thing, um, th the people who are obese, the people who are fat, they do not have large stomachs, but they have an extra pad of fat. Everyone has this pad of fat, this is called the uh, omentum, you can see, this, this is the outer part of the stomach, it is sometimes referred to as the greater curvature and this is the lesser curvature of the stomach, you can see there is a fat pad hanging from the greater curvature of the stomach, it has a lot of fat. So, th when uh, our the fat is stored in our body, it is not only stored beneath the skin, this is the fat is stored beneath the skin, it is also stored in this part. So, n in under normal circumstances, this fat is required and it protects the internal organs, the intestines, you can see it is covering them, it is like a cushion pad to them. But when it increases in amount a lot, the stomach, the, the belly is protruded and uh, your belly is fat okay so it is not because of the size of the stomach is it is actually because of this omentum that the belly is out and the person looks fat uh, and uh, one more interesting fact is that uh, the people who have this extra fat this is normal but if someone has extra fat this extra fat will uh, uh, will exert pressure on the stomach and because of that some gastric contents while the stomach is mixing up the food they will push they will push back into the esophagus and that person will experience heartburn and sometimes reflux so even if you lose as little as one or two pounds it would make a significant difference in um, reducing the symptoms of heartburn and reflux it is very good uh, to exercise to reduce the symptoms than to take uh, proton pump inhibitors and antacids for the rest of your life and this was about a stomach and in the next uh, video we will cover the digestion from the stomach to the um, small intestines and large intestines and probably we will cover the ejection in that as well. 
so uh, we covered in the first video the ingestion the part of the digestion digestive system the ingestion the taking in of food and the digestion it starts in here how it starts in here because the stomach produces an enzyme pepsinogen pepsinogen is a is an enzyme that acts on protein and digests the protein partly the acid in the stomach does not digest the protein the sole purpose of it is to kill bacteria and any harmful substances that an acid can act on and uh, acid can kill the bacteria the main function of the stomach is no it is not digestion the main function of it is to store food and there is one indispensable function of a stomach it is a bit um, advanced level question but a stomach produces a factor called the intrinsic factor it is uh, you can say it is a substance that binds vitamin b12 and diet and if this substance does not bind vitamin b12 this vitamin b12 does not get absorbed into this uh, in small intestine so for it to be absorbed a stomach must produce intrinsic factor and if vitamin b12 is deficient in a patient it would result in anemia and that that particular type of anemia is called pernicious anemia so those patients who have their stomachs removed they have pernicious anemia unless they take b12 and intrinsic factor in their diet okay that was about stomach and um, i hope you understand right and uh, you take something from my lectures thanks for watching okay bye bye